Welcome back to Designing New Algorithms with Qiskit. This is episode four, where we are looking at operator backpropagation, or OBP, a technique to reduce the depth of quantum circuits used for expectation value calculations. This is a more general technique, which can be tried on any circuit, which makes it relevant for many applications like chemistry, material science, or optimization. It's been demonstrated on circuits with as many as 127 qubits and nearly 5,000 two qubit gates. I'll introduce you to the key ideas behind OBP, and then Bryce will show us a coding demonstration of how to apply OBP, which is available as a Qiskit add-on to significantly reduce the circuit depth for a Hamiltonian simulation problem. Energy of a molecule, polarization of a magnetic material, optimal value of a combinatorial optimization problem, what do all these examples have in common? They can be determined from the expectation value of some operator. Experiments being run today to compute these expectation values on a quantum computer are constrained by the error of the quantum hardware. This limits the depth of circuits we can run, which in turn limits the size of problems we can solve. To try and overcome this, error mitigation techniques have been developed to enable more accurate calculations on current quantum hardware at a scale beyond what we could do with brute force classical computation. However, these techniques typically require us to draw a number of samples from the circuit that grows exponentially in the depth of that circuit. Because of this high cost of error mitigation, there has been a lot of effort in recent years to use classical techniques to reduce the depth of a quantum circuit as much as possible before we run it on hardware. You might be familiar with improvements in circuit transpilation, multi-product formulas for Hamiltonian time evolution, and approximate circuit compilation techniques. What all these developments reflect is the ongoing need for new algorithms that reduce the depth of circuits. This is exactly what operator backpropagation can be used for. OBP reduces the depth of quantum circuits using classical simulation algorithms based on Clifford Perturbation Theory, or CPT. In basic terms, OBP produces shallower circuits, but at the cost of more classical preprocessing and possibly more circuit executions on quantum hardware. CPT-based algorithms work by classically evolving poly operators through quantum circuits. This is sometimes also called polypropagation. OBP is a special case of polypropagation, where we start from the gates at the very end of our circuit and evolve our observable backward through our circuit in the Heisenberg picture. The more non-Clifford gates we have in our circuit, the faster our classical cost grows. However, by allowing for some approximation error, we can extend this method to a broader class of circuits. In other words, there's a cost to accuracy trade-off we can configure between how much error we want to tolerate and our budget of classical and quantum resources. So how does OBP actually work in practice? The idea is pretty simple. We start by dividing our circuit into two portions. The first portion, U sub Q, is what we intend to run on quantum hardware. The second portion, U sub C, will eliminate by classically backpropagating our observable through it. As we backpropagate the observable, circuit instructions are absorbed into the observable one at a time, causing the number of terms in the observable to grow as the circuit U sub C shrinks. In other words, we're trimming off the tail of the circuit, but our observable is getting bigger. In general, the number of terms added to the observable can double each time a non-Clifford gate is encountered. More terms in the backpropagated operator generally translates to more circuit executions. So the goal is to backpropagate as much of the circuit as possible without allowing the operator to grow too large. One way to allow for deeper backpropagation into the circuit while preventing the operator from growing too large is to truncate terms with small coefficients rather than including them in the operator. Truncating terms can result in fewer quantum circuits to execute at the end, but it introduces an error in the final expectation value calculation. We know that this error will be determined by the coefficient magnitude of the terms we truncated, which means we can choose how much error we want to tolerate in exchange for faster calculations. 
This is a lot of detail to digest, so I'm going to hand off to Bryce now to walk us through a code example of how to use OBB in practice to reduce the depth of a circuit used to study dynamics of a Heisenberg model. So now, we're going to walk through a hands-on demo of how to use the OBP add-on to study the dynamics of a 50-qubit Heisenberg spin chain. This model is useful for understanding the properties of magnetic materials because it can describe interactions between magnetic spins in a lattice and their response to external magnetic fields. For this problem, we're interested in computing the global magnetization, or polarization. We set it up so that it's beyond brute force classical simulation, but can still be simulated by tensor network methods. We'll follow the steps of a Qiskit pattern. In step one, we'll map the description of our Heisenberg model to a trotterized time evolution circuit. In step two, we'll reduce the depth of that circuit by processing it with OBP and then transpiling it to run on a specific target QPU. In step three, we'll execute that circuit with the estimator primitive to get an expectation value. And finally, in step four, we'll retrieve that final expectation value from the estimator and visualize the results. So let's get into it. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is map the description of our Hamiltonian to a trotter circuit. First, let's make the coupling map for this 1D chain. To actually build the Hamiltonian, we're going to use this method from the Qiskit add-on utils called Generate XYZ Hamiltonian. It's going to take our coupling map and put an XX, a YY, and a ZZ term on every edge with some fixed parameter. In this case, we're using integer fractions of pi. We're going to construct the observable that we plan to measure at the end. This is just going to be the average of all sigma ZI terms, right? Uh, this is often called the average magnetization or the polarization. You can see what each turn looks like in this printout of some of the Paulis. To actually build the time evolution circuit, we're going to use this function from the Qiskit add-on utils called generate time evolution circuit. We'll pass in the Hamiltonian, the time we want to evolve by, and a method that specifies the product formula that we want to use. The circuit we get looks something like this. In order to actually feed this into the Qiskit add-on for OBP, we first need to divide it up into what are called slices. The purpose of this is to give the OBP add-on information about where it should stop to simplify between backpropagating through individual operations, as well as do things like truncation. We're going to use a method from the Qiskit add-on utils slicing module called slice by gate types. There's also a method called combine slices, which is helpful because you can pass in the list of slices you just got and tell it to put them back together with barriers in between. This is useful to let you visualize where your slices actually were in your circuit. In our case, this looks like how we expect. For step two, we're gonna take this circuit and these slices we just constructed, and we're gonna first backpropagate through them so that we can get a smaller circuit, and then we're gonna transpile that to a particular QPU. To backpropagate, the first thing we're gonna do is define an operator budget. The purpose of this is to bound how large our operator can grow as it backpropagates through the circuit. We're going to say that we want our operator backpropagation to stop when the observable gets just above 12 qubit-wise commuting groups and then return right before then. This way, we can limit how many circuits we need to run uh, once we get our shortened circuit back out. To apply backpropagation, we're going to use the backpropagate method from the Qiskit OBP add-on. We'll pass in the observable we want to propagate, the slices we want it to propagate through, and the operator budget we just defined. We can see that it stops after seven slices, came out with a 12 qubit-wise commuting groups, and if it had gone one more slice, that would have grown to 27 qubit-wise commuting groups. This is okay, but if we want to do better, we can add in a little bit of an error budget to the backpropagate method. What this will do is truncate away small terms in our operator to prevent it from growing quite so fast. We'll set an L2 error budget of 3 times 10 to the minus 2. We can do this using the setup budget function from the Qiskit add-on for OBP. We'll say the maximum total error is 0.03, and we'll set a budget for each individual slice of 0.005. By setting p-norm to 2, we're telling the add-on that we want to measure error with respect to the 2-norm instead of the 1-norm. We'll backpropagate just like before, but this time we're going to pass in this truncation budget. We can see that we still end up with 12 qubit-wise commuting groups, but this time we backpropagated through 13 slices. If we had gone one more, this would have been 25 qubit-wise commuting groups. We can compare the original circuit we started with with the one that we shortened using OBP with truncation. This top circuit is our original time evolution circuit, and the bottom one is where we get after using OBP with a truncation error budget of 0.03. Next, 
We want to take these circuits and transpile them so they can run on the IBM Kingston quantum processor. We're going to run three circuits. The original, unshortened circuit, the circuit that we shortened using exact OBP with no error budget, and the circuit that we got when using OBP with an error budget of 0.03. The two qubit depths for these circuits are 48, 40, and 34, respectively. Next, we're going to execute these circuits on a quantum processor. To do this, we're going to use the Qiskit primitive estimator. We're going to set some of the error mitigation options in the estimator so we can get improved results. Let's go through what these are one at a time. First, we're going to turn on readout error mitigation. This is going to run a couple of jobs before our actual circuits are executed, so it can characterize the probabilities that we're getting bit flips in our measurements, and then use that information to correct our measurement outcomes for the actual circuits. We're also going to do zero noise extrapolation. The idea here is rather than running one circuit and computing its expectation value, we're going to run a couple of circuits, and we're going to amplify the error for the subsequent ones. This will let us see how our expectation value is deviating as a function of increasing error, and then we can extrapolate backwards towards zero error. And finally, we're going to turn on twirling. This is going to randomly insert single qubit gates with every single shot that we execute on the quantum processor. And on average, it shapes the noise of our quantum processor to be of a form that is easier to error mitigate. We can pass all these into the estimator through this options field. After we execute on hardware, we can visualize the results. We see that without using backpropagation, we get an error which is off by a little less than 0.02. If we backpropagate without doing any truncation, we have a slightly shorter circuit, which does a little bit better than the original one. But if we backpropagate with an error budget of 0.03, we do notably better than the first two. And that's all there is to it. We've included several links in the description below, so you can access the full version of this code example, dive into the research behind the OBP technique, and learn more about Qiskit add-ons. And this is just the beginning. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any future videos in the series. Cheers!